Budgeting does not have to be difficult or excessively tedious. In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through my monthly budgeting process that takes me less than one hour each month to complete. To start off, I'll be covering the two primary methods of budgeting, then I'll take you inside of my Excel spreadsheet and show you the exact method I use to account for my income, variable and fixed expenses, and my savings. I'll also leave a link to my Excel budget spreadsheet in the description section down below. So whether you're new to budgeting or just like a refresher, stick around because this video is for you. The two primary methods of budgeting are the 50-30-20 method and zero-based budgeting. In the 50-30-20 method, you allocate 50% of your money toward your needs, 30% of your money toward your wants, and 20% of your money toward debt repayment and savings. This method is really great because it's simple and easy to follow, and especially if you have a fluctuating income month to month, the 50-30-20 method can be really helpful because you don't have to worry about estimating figures for specific expenses. The downside to this method is that it doesn't really take into account your personal circumstances. For example, the 50-30-20 method may not be the best option for you if you have high interest debt that you are looking to pay down quickly. This is because 20% of your income is allocated toward both your debt repayment and your savings. And if you're trying to get rid of your high interest debt as quickly as possible, which is highly recommended, then 20% just may not cut it for you. Also, this method doesn't take into account the possibility that you may not want to spend 30% of your money on your wants. So in that way, this method is not very flexible and the simplicity of the 50-30-20 method has its limitations. For those reasons, I would recommend zero-based budgeting, which is the second major budgeting method. In zero-based budgeting, every single dollar of income is assigned a specific role whether that be to go toward your savings, your debt repayment, your bills, your groceries, every single dollar of income is accounted for. This means that at the end of the month, your total income minus your total expenses equals zero. The downside to zero-based budgeting is that it can take longer to complete compared to the 50-30-20 method because you are accounting for every single dollar. But at the end, I think this is really beneficial because you can see exactly where your money went and know which categories of expenses you need to bring down in order to meet your financial goals. I personally use zero-based budgeting and I found it to be very helpful in holding myself accountable to my spending habits. So now that you know the two types of budgeting methods, let's get into the spreadsheet so I can walk you through an example month. And just for context, the numbers that I'm using will be realistic, but they will not be accurate to my personal budget because I'm not really gonna put my business out there on the internet like that. Uh, but nevertheless, I will show you the exact method that has worked well for me, and let's get into it. All right, so welcome into my budgeting spreadsheet. I'll give you an overview of this spreadsheet before I dive into the details. Um, as you can see at the top here, I have a drop down menu so I can easily select the month that I'm budgeting for. I'm going to walk through the November um, month with you guys since November just ended. And then right below that, I have a summary for my total income, total expenses, savings, and remaining available funds. And once I'm done budgeting, the remaining available funds will be equal to zero since I do zero-based budgeting, as I mentioned. Um, and then on the right here, I have two different charts. The first chart is a cash flow summary, and this will populate based on the actual numbers that I'm going to enter here um, with you guys. And it will show me a percentage breakdown of how much money I have put toward my fixed, variable, savings, and debt. And then over here on the far right, I have a budget versus actual chart. And as you can see, the budget numbers have already been populated because I've already gone through and added in my budgeted numbers for each of these categories. And then as we go through this exercise, you'll see the actual numbers populated in here as well. And one last thing before we get started that I want to show you 
is down below here I have a transaction tracker which I use to record my variable expenses. So this is like dining out, gas, things like that throughout the month. I will add them here and it will populate this transaction breakdown which is a pie chart based on the categories that I've made. Um, and then this transaction summary numbers will automatically fill out the actual section of my variable expenses, but more on that later. Okay, so I like to start off with my income and I get paid bi-monthly, so I've left space in here for paycheck number one and paycheck number two. And then I also left some additional spaces to add in side hustle income. And right now my budget for side hustle income for November is 250. And I'll go ahead and add in my actual numbers right now. And then let's say for my side hustle, I only made 150 instead of 250 for this month. So you can see here that the total has automatically updated and so has my total income summary above. Next, I'm going to skip over variable expenses for now and move on to fixed expenses. In here, I have a spot for my tithes. If you don't know what that is, it's just a word that means giving back to the Lord. So I have my tithes automatically deducted first off of my paycheck. So that's always the same every month. And then next after that, I have a spot for my rent, phone bill, car insurance, gym membership, and internet. And these all never change month to month. So it's just very easy to simply take these numbers here and copy them over into the actual section. And you can see that the charts above are updating. Um, and some other fixed expenses that may apply to you are childcare fees, tuition fees, um, property taxes. So just make sure to add in all the categories that you need. Next, I'll move on to debt. And in this section is where I'll record my budget for how much I expect to spend on my credit card. I'll add on my student loan repayment and my car payment. And although some of these expenses can be considered fixed, especially my student loan and my car payment, I like to separate this out of my fixed expenses so that I can have an understanding of how much money exactly I am allocating toward debt repayment. And another thing I wanna mention is that in these budgeted numbers, I account for paying over the minimum just so that I can quickly repay down my debt. So for this section, my budget, always tends to be my actual here. So now that that's entered, we are done here. Next, let's move on to variable expenses. And for this, I have pre-made some categories that I tend to find I have recurring variable expenses in. And then I've also added um, some custom category dropdown sections here below, just in case I'm budgeting for an expense which I think really doesn't fit into one of these broader categories. I can just easily add in a line item for that expense and budget for it. But as you can see, I have um, categories for grocery, dining out, shopping, personal care. And in personal care, I would just add in um, like one-off gym, group fitness classes, 5K run registrations, nail appointments, things of that nature. And then I have a, a line item for healthcare. And since I have a high deductible healthcare plan, any month that I'm planning to go visit the doctor, I'll include that in my budget here. And then I also have space for utilities, gas, entertainment, and gifts. And um, to make coming up with the actual number easier here, I use my transaction tracker and I record my individual expense for each of those categories that I um, had just mentioned above. So to make filling out the transaction tracker easy, what I typically do is go on my bank's website and download my monthly statement and just look through that so I can add in the date, the amount, and then I select the category name 
And then I also add in a brief description of the store or service. And just for the sake of time in this video, I won't make you watch me do all of that. I've um, already written out these categories and I will add that in and then come back and show you what it looks like once it's populated. All right, so I've gone ahead and added in my transactions for the month. And as you can see, this transaction breakdown has um, come up with a summary with percentages. And I really like this uh, breakdown because it, it shows me visually how much money I've been spending in each one of these categories. And the most is definitely shopping for this month. Um, so this just helps me visualize my spending habits and I can easily see where and what category I need to cut down in. And then the numbers from this transaction summary here below, which is a sum of all these individual line items here, automatically populates in my actual section for the variable expenses. So you can see that that has um, added in here. So this section is now done. So the last section I have to complete is the saving section. And you can see I have two different saving buckets here. One is just general savings. So that's not really particularly earmarked to anything, just general savings. And then I also have a vacation sinking fund. And I like to keep both of my savings buckets in a high yield savings account with Capital One 360. That way I'm also earning interest on my balance throughout the year. So although I only have um, two savings buckets in here, you can definitely customize it to add more. If you have an emergency fund or additional sinking funds, that would go in this section here. So I like to fill out my savings last because what my savings looks like really depends on how um, my variable side hustle income looks like for that month and as well as my variable expense spending for the month. So you can see up here, my remaining available funds to allocate is 575.63 and my budgeted for savings for November was 630. So I'm coming in a little bit under, but I'll just go ahead and add in the actual figures here. So now you can see everything is completely updated and I'll just scroll up here to the top so you can see the updated charts. Um, so my total income has updated, expenses, savings, and my remaining available funds is zero as it should be. And this cash flow summary has been completely um, filled out so I can see where my money is being allocated to and my budget versus actual summary is coming in showing me where I um, met my goal, my budget, and where I came in a little bit short. All right, so that is how I budget. And this entire process typically takes me less than one hour to complete. And in the grand scheme of things, one hour out of my entire month is really like nothing. So to me, this process is worth it so I can keep track of how I'm doing financially and march toward my goals. So if you don't already have a monthly budgeting routine, I hope you feel both encouraged and equipped to get started right now. And as I mentioned, the link to my budget Excel spreadsheet is in the description section below. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you would consider subscribing to my channel for more personal finance content because I have a new video released each week. And next, go ahead and watch this video over here, which is on the top five high yield savings accounts, which are the perfect place to grow your sinking funds and your emergency funds and protect your money from losing value due to inflation. See you next time.